Hello everybody, my name is Armin Jaumi and I am a plant pathologist at the University of Bonn. I would like to introduce you today to our recent research and uh, our uh, model system is used Telagomedes. It's a plant pathogenic fungus which is infecting maize and causing these dramatic galls on all aerial parts of the plant. If you zoom into this interaction, you see here in red the fungal hyphae and in green the plasma membrane of the host plant. It's becoming obvious that this fungus needs to control this interaction in order to manipulate the host and this is done with the help of effector molecules. Effectors are basically molecules, among them are proteins but also RNAs and other molecules which are able to manipulate the host plant in favor of the pathogen. So they are secreted by the pathogen but they are acting on the plant side. We are focusing on these effectors and they are specifically on effector proteins because if you understand these effectors, you can understand how the pathogen manipulates its host. In order to understand the story I would like to tell you, I would like to refresh you the plant immune system, at least one layer of it. And here I would like to show you that plants recognize the environment with the help of pattern recognition receptors. These are receptors which are at the plasma membrane and they are recognizing highly conserved molecules, among them, for example, the flagellin of bacteria. And so they are called pathogen-associated molecular patterns. And if such a recognition event happens, the plant is triggering a signaling cascade which leads to the production of reactive oxygen species in the outside space, so in the apoplast of the plant cell. And this is then triggering in the end pattern or a pump triggered immunity responses of the plant. In order to be successful as a pathogen, the pathogen needs to suppress these events with the help of effectors. And so we screened our effector library of Eustelagomedes and uh, asked the question which effectors of Eustelagomedes are able to suppress this signaling pathway. This is work which was done by my former PhD student Fernando Navarrete and he has screened 300 candidate effectors in the heterologous system Nicotiana bentamiana, screening them one by one, expressing them in the plant and asking the question which plant expressing a specific effector is still able or not able anymore to respond to pumps, to pathogen associated molecular patterns. And he identified several effectors which are able to suppress this Rossburst response of the plant. And to our surprise, these were not little, uh, this was not a little number, these were 34 effectors out of the 300 candidate effectors tested. This is one part of the story. And I would like to <clears throat> explain you a second concept. So plants have to make continuously the decision between um, defense or growth. And so what happens is if a plant is strengthening the defense, it's on the cost of its growth potential. And reverse, if the plant is deciding to invest its resources into growth, it's usually on the cost of the defense. So pathogens are misusing basically this antagonism within the plant by promoting growth in order to suppress the defense signaling. And this is also what we assume for Eustelagomedes, which causes this uncontrolled growth, the gall formation, because exactly this is leading in the end to a diminishing of the defense responses. So we ask the question, which hormone signaling pathways are involved in growth control in plants? The major hormone signaling pathway which is involved in growth control in plants is the auxin signaling pathway and this is the core which is highly conserved in all land plants. What you see here is a transcriptional activator. This is the DNA bound to a promoter. Then you have a repressor protein which is binding the transcription factor, suppressing it and recruiting a co-repressor which is called topless. And this complex suppresses the transcription. Now, if auxin comes into the game, auxin leads to the degradation of the aux IA proteins and thereby deplacing also topless, the core repressor. And this leads basically to the freeing or um, enabling the transcription factor ARF to lead to the transcription of auxin responsive genes, leading to growth responses. So we performed a screen where we screened, so this, were, this is work done by two of my postdocs 
Um, it's Janosz Bindic and Mamuna Khan and they performed a screen looking for effectors able to induce the growth hormone signaling pathway. And they identified a number of effectors and interestingly enough, they were all clustered within the genome. We further analyzed then what are they interacting with and we identified by co-immunoprecipitation co that Ustilagomedes effectors from this, from this uh, cluster are all interacting with topless. So topless is getting inhibited with the help of effectors, thereby derepressing the auxin signaling pathway in the plant. The interesting thing comes now that when we overlaid the results of the two different screens, the ROSPIS suppression screen and the auxin signaling induction screen, we identified that all topless interacting effectors, we identified two more which were recently published, are all within the group of the 34 ROSPA suppressing effectors, indicating that topless is a positive regulator in the ROSPA uh, control. So moreover, we could show that this is not only valid for Nicotiana bentamiana, but valid from a monocot plant like maize to Arabidopsis, the model plant, to Nicotiana bentamiana. So it's a highly conserved mechanism, which we identified with the help of the effectors. What is topless doing? Topless is central in the repression of various signaling pathways, not only the auxin signaling pathway, but also the BR signaling pathway, which are both growth hormone signaling pathways. Furthermore, on the J ethylene signaling pathway involved in the, in the control of necrotrophic pathogens and in the anthocyanin biosynthesis pathway. And upon the Ustilagomedes infection, we propose that Ustilagomedes secretes a number of effectors suppressing topless, thereby derepressing all these signaling pathways. And what we observe, for example, in the infection is also the formation of anthocyanin upon Ustilagomedes infection. We observe growth signaling. We see on the transcriptomic level JA ethylene signaling being upregulated. And as there is an intrinsic antagonism, we see a suppression of the salicylic acid defense signaling pathway, which is targeting basically Ustilagomedes otherwise. And we furthermore show in our publication that if we over manipulate topless, the plant has a built in protection mechanism, which is basically leading to salicylic acid defense responses and to cell death, protecting itself from the pathogen. So there is an equilibrium, evolutionary equi equilibrium evolved to manipulate topless by the effectors, but not to over manipulate it. The take home message here is today, effector research reveals new connections in plant immunity, like for example, topless controlling rosburst, and the TPL, the topless proteins are basically an effector hub for the Ustilagomedes maze interaction. This has been recently published in New Phytologist, and I would not like to stop without saying thanks to my group, which has done the work, and to my collaborators and the funding agencies which have supported this work. Thank you.